Good morning, and today we will be talking about option pricing. So if you are facing an opportunity to buy an option, you, you want to know its fair price. Then you want to decide, compared to the fair price, the current market price is overpriced or underpriced. Then you can make the sale or buy or purchase decisions. So today we are going to learn how to price an option. But before we do that, let's look, look at the roadmap. So first of all, we need to understand those determinants of option values. And then we are going to know the binomial option pricing model. And these two the, the determinants and, uh, of option values and the binomial option pricing model, they are required learning objectives. And then the, the last two, the black shoes model and the put call parity, although they will, all, they will both be on the CFA level one or level two material, but for our class, they are advanced. So I will not include them into the final exam. But for you to understand the options better, I think it's very essential to learn the black shoes model and the put call parity. Okay, now let's start. First of all, we want to understand what are the determinants of the call option value. So here is actually a table, a very important table. I think you can put it on your formula sheet. So we have listed uh, six different determinants on, on the left-hand side. See if this variable increases. So we have the stock price. S denotes stock price. X denotes excise price and the sigma denotes standard deviation as well as the volatility of the stock and T is the time to expiration. The R sub F is a, a denotes interest rate and we also have the dividend payout, dividend payouts. So if the one of those variables increases then the value of a call option will increase or decrease. Let's look at them one by one and try to understand it. First of all, we want to list uh, the current value of the call option. So this, this S denotes stock price, right? And we have the future excess price at the time when the option expires but we need to get the MPV of the excess price. So we use the S minus the X divided by the one plus RF, one plus R sub F, and then the T's power, because we need to discount the X back to the present for T years or T investment periods. So to, to summarize, the co options value is determined by the current store price and the present value of the excess price. Let's look at the first one. When the store price increases, the C also increases. That's very easy to understand. When the, uh, the S increase, C increase. Okay, let's look at the second one. When the future excess price increases, C decreases. Okay, this is like if S minus a larger number and the S will decrease. Okay, so this is also very easy to understand. Let's look at the next one. When volatility of stock price increases, if the stock price looks like very volatile, looks like up and down, up and down, then the probability of higher stock price so the probability of you get if you see a higher stock price also increases and this is favorable for the call option buyer because last class we talked about for call option buyers they always want the market price will be higher they, they, they always want the market price be higher so they can buy low and sell high so if the probability of the higher stock price increases the co option value also increases. Okay, now let's look at the T. The T happened here in the 
denominator. So the when the t increases, the term of the x minus a larger number decreases. So s minus a smaller number, the c increases. Okay, and also if the t increases, if the t increases, the uncertainty increases. So the probability of getting a higher stock price also increases, which is a favorable situation for the call option buyer. So the call option value increases. Okay. So the, when the interest rate increases, let's look at the RF. If the risk free rate or the money market product rates increases, then the X divided by a larger number decrease and s is equal to the s minus the larger number so c increases c increases let's look at the last one when the dividend payouts increases the growth of the stock price decreases therefore the c decreases this is easier to understand if you pay that lot as dividend payout, then the retention ratio or the pullback ratio will decrease, which means you cannot invest a lot of money into this company's future um, positive MPV pro projects. So the growth, the G of the stock price decreases. If the stock price decreases, then the C call option value decreases. So these are the determinants of the call option values. Now let's look at the put option. For put option value determinants, we also uh, look into the six different variables: store price, excess price, standard deviation, T, RF interest rate, and dividend payouts. But we see this time the value of a put option for the T for the T time to maturity increase the value could be increased or uncertain why it would be this case let's look at how to determine how to determine the put options value the put options value because the put options buyer can have the option to sell it at the pre-specified excess price so we take the present value of x, excess price, x divided by 1 plus rf, the t's power, and minus s. So what they hope is they can sell high and buy low, which the mindset is completely the opposite way of the call option buyers. And also again, the put option value is determined by the present value of excess price and the current store price. So when the store price increases, P decreases, pretty straightforward. When the excess price increases, P also increases, again, very straightforward. Let's look at the volatility. If the volatility of store price increases, if the sigma increases, the probability of getting a lower store price increases. Remember, for the call option buyer, we want a higher price, and for the put option buyer, we want a lower store price. So if the stock is very volatile, the probability of getting a lower stock price increases. Therefore, the put option value increases. Let's look at the T. When T increases, the probability of lower stock price increases. Therefore, the put option value increases. Okay, however, however, the x over 1 plus rf's t power decreases, decreases. So actually, if we analyze this from the two different angle, the effects are offset. So we say the change is uncertain. The change is uncertain. So if we go back to this slide, 
if you say this value of a put option is uncertain, uh, of course that is correct. But usually we think the the effect from the uncertainty overweight the the effect of the x over one plus r f the t power. So if you say if you say this is actually increase if you say if the t increases the value of the put option increases this is also correct when the interest rate increases this term decreases so the p the um, put option value decreases that is straightforward and last one when the d increases the growth of stock price decreases, therefore the P increases. This is also easier to understand, right? Because if the growth of stock price decreases, then the possible value of stock price also decreases, so which will increase the put options value. Okay, the next question of this class is how to determine the co-option the put option and put options value. How to compute the put option and co um, co options value. So this is the second topic. Binomial option pricing model. Okay. On the book, actually, if you open the book and try to search for the binomial option pricing model, I think the way introduced in the book is very confusing. But the way I summarize here is much more uh, <coughs> transparent and easier to understand. So the binomial option pricing model from the topic from the name I can see this is actually a two-state option pricing. So we assume that in the future, in the future, the stock price can take one of the two values. The first probability is they could increase by 20% or they could decrease or fall by 10% and for this question the excess price is a hundred dollar a hundred ten dollars okay. so let's look at the futures value if we suppose the store price is a hundred dollars today and in the future it can take one of the two values it could be 120, this is the first scenario, or could be $90. And if the store price take one of the two values, then the call option will also take one of the two values in the future. Remember, for the call option, the value is actually the x, see if I can write here. Can draw okay so for the co options value is actually the store price minus the X price so let's do let's look at the the first scenario if the store price increased by 20% the stock price is 120 is 120 so the co options value will be s 120 minus the excess price here it become the ten dollars second scenario if the store price falls by 10 percent then in the future store price is 90 dollars if you use 90 minus 110 you will get a negative cash flow. So what shall we do? Last class we talked about this scenario, right? So we will choose not to excise it. Then the call options value will be zero, will be zero. So we will uh, either take a positive cash flow or a zero. We will never take any negative cash flow. This is the key.
So the key of the binomial pricing model is we assume at time zero, at time zero, we bought n shares of stocks and b shares of t-bills. To simplify the calculation, and we assume the t-bills worth one dollar per share. And then we hope these twin securities can replicate the option payoff at time t. Because we have two states, then we have two equations. We can solve for n and b. After we solve for n and b, it's very easy for us to solve for the present value of the twin security, the stock, the t-bill combination. And this is also the value of the option. So now let's look at the same numerical example. The first step, we have the payoff in the up state. We have 10, if you remember, and we we have the and we have the in the up state, it is 10. And the payoff in the down state, because we choose not to excess it, in the down state, the payoff is zero. And then we have two equations. Then remember this is equation at time t is in the future. So in the future, the stock t bill combination, the value is actually on the left hand side. We have n shares of stock, and at t, the stock price is S U in upstate. And plus, we have B shares of the T bill, and the value at time T will be times 1 plus RF plus 1 plus RF, and then it is equal to 10%. It is equal to 10%. And now let's look at the two equations. The first equation is in the up state. So we have the future at time t, the twin securities value, n times the s in upstate, plus b times 1 plus rf is equal to 10. So if we plug in number, it will be 100. This 100 is the stock price in upstate, times the n, n shares of stocks, plus the risk free rate is 0.1. So we have 1.1B, and the value is $10. The value is $10. And in the down state, it will be $90 times N plus 1 plus 1B is equal to $1. So this, uh, this is actually the key of the binomial option pricing model. Now we can solve these two unknowns. How to solve it? Yes, subtract the equation 2 from the equation 1. Then it is just very simple. Let me see if I can write here. Okay, so if we use the 1 minus 2, we have seems like I cannot write it here. Okay. Okay, if you do like the one minus two, you'll get thirty n equal to ten and n is one third. And then you plug in plug um, plug in the n is one third into equation one or two, you will get b is a negative number, negative twenty seven point twenty seven. Okay, next slide. Okay, the last slide is to get the present value of the twin security. This is as well as the present value of the co-option we are computing now. So what is the co-option's value? It's equal to n shares of today's stock price. This is the present value. When you purchase the stock, 
n shares of stock at time zero, remember we are going to get the present value of the option. So we have one third n shares times the stock price. Stock price from this question is a hundred. You can see from this slide. At time t, at time t it is a hundred twenty or ninety, but at time zero it is a hundred. Okay, so one third times a hundred minus twenty seven point twenty seven and it is six dollars six cents. So this is our co options present value. And now if you open the web course, the extra credit for lecture eighteen, you will see the extra credit. If you can submit it before four fifteen today and you will get the extra credit. You will get the attendance credit first. If you can solve it correctly you will get the one extra credit. We just did the binomial option pricing model for the call option. And now let's look at the put options case. Okay, so we will derive a two state put option value in this problem. The data is S0 is 100 and excess price is 110. So 1 plus risk-free rate is 1.1, 1, 1 .1, which means the risk-free rate is 10% again in this question. And the two possibilities for the S store price at time t are 130 and 80 and 80. The first question we are going to figure out is what are the payoffs of the put option at time t. So if the st, if the st is 130, which is in up state, this is actually the unfavorable situation for the put option buyer because put option buyer hope the store price could be lower, as low as possible, preferred ideally could be zero dollars, right? So the $130, if we minus excess price, with excess price minus 130, you will get a negative payoff. So we will choose not to excess it. So the P is zero. So if the ST is $80, so 110 minus 80, okay, this is positive. So we will choose to excise option. So the P is $30. So now we have these two equations. Now we have these two equations. First, in the up state, 130 times n shares plus 1.1 times b is, is equal to zero. From last slide, we know this is a payoff for the put option in the up state. In the down state, we have 80 times the n plus 1.1b is $30. This is in the down state for store price, but this is a positive cash flow situation for, for the put option buyer. So still we can just solve it very easily and we can subtract equation two from equation one and we can get the n is equal to negative 0.6. So if we plug this number into the equation one or equation two of course it's easier to plug to plug it into the equation one you will get b is equal to 70.91 dollars last step is to get to the present value of the twin securities as well as the present value of the put option so we will have the n n is a negative number now it's 0.6 times the today's stock price 100 and then time and plus the b 791 you will get the present value of the put option is ten dollars 91 cents okay very good so we also know how to do it for the put option and if we compare the answers um, for the put option with the option we just did it actually there is a trick to get to the first judgment, see if you got it right or wrong. For co 
option calculation, the N, how many shares of stocks, will always be a positive number, and B will be a negative number. But for the put option, the N will always be a negative number, and B will be a positive number. So this is kind of a shortcut for you to, um, to judge if you got it right on the exam. For example, if put, for put option, if you get a positive N and a negative B, and you might did it wrong. So you can just go back and check where you got it wrong. Okay, we have finished the two the key learning objective, and then now let's look at the Black Shoes option valuation. So the Black Shoes option valuation is kind of the fundamental option valuation method adopted for uh, all the traders and analysts. But based on Black Shoes, they can make some modification and to better accommodate some different features of options. And this is also the modern option pricing techniques are considered to be the most mathematically complex of all applied areas of finance. And if you see the formula, you will understand why I say it is the most mathematically complex. Okay, now this is uh, this tool is actually the Black Shoes option valuation for co options for co options. So the C0 is the objective number we want to get. It is the current co-option value. And S0 is the current store price. So if you look at the equation and there is a D1, this is a normal distribution, D1 and D2 actually are here. Take the format here. You might feel it looks like way too complicated. Yes, because it tries to incorporate all the complicated situations for the options. But actually, if we simplify it, we can we will find out it is very similar to the to the form we we just did for the determinants. Remember, if we go back to the determinants for the co-option, we take a format like that, right? And for the co-option, we take the format like the the x minus s co-option s minus x. Let's see how we can modify the Black Shoes option model by doing some simple assumptions. Okay. First of all, if we assume no dividend is paid for the stock, then we can get this format. The C is equal to the S times the normal distribution D1 minus X this is a continuous discounting format. This is just the equal to or very similar to x divided by 1, my, 1 plus rf. But we use a continuous discounting format and times the normal distribution. Why we take the normal distribution? Because the stock price, the store price would be a random number from the normal distribution. But if we assume, if we assume the ND is zero, which means we will always excise the option. Then we will get C is equal to S minus the present value of the future excess price. It looks very similar, looks very similar, right? Okay, and if instead we assume the ND is zero, is, is zero which means it is certain that we will not excise the option, then we will get the co-option's value is zero. So actually, if we try to um, break the black shoes model down, and then it is we can just simplify it. It's just the same format as the one we just did in class for the determinants. We will also uh, figure out the assumptions of the black shoes option model. So first of all. The first assumption is we assume the stock will pay a constant, continuous dividend yield until the option expiration date. And we also assume the, the interest rate, RF, and the variance rate, sigma square, or the sigma, of the stocks are constant. And further, we assume the stock prices are continuous. And more important, more important, 
we assume the black shoes formula is only valid for European put option. For the first class, we know for the for the European option, and they actually can only be excised can only be excised at the time of expiration date. But American option, you can choose to excise it like on or before the expiration date. So this is the black shoes model. Last learning objective is to to know what is a put call parity. So so far, we have focused on the pricing of call options because call options are always easier to understand. Call options buyers they hope the stock price will go up and then they buy low and sell high. But for put option um, buyers, they so they need to. And keep in mind, they want to sell high first, and they uh, hopefully they can purchase the stock from the market at a much lower price. So it's always easier to understand the call option better. And actually, if we know the call option's value, the put option's price can be derived simply from the prices of calls. But this is only for the European put and calls, because. European put and calls are linked together in an equation, and this equation is called put call parity. So let's look at that. This is the equation for the put call parity. If we want to interpret it, it's the stock price, today's stock price, plus the put option premium minus the call option premium is equal to the present value of the excess price. We can always say being long the stock, long a put with strike price of X and shorter call with strike price of X is the same as lending the present value of X. This is how to interpret the put, or put call parity. So let's see how to do that. Okay, so we can simply rearrange the put call parity. If after we re uh, rearrange it, the C is equal to the S plus P minus present value of X. So if we know the put options price, we can simply get the call options price. And, and the same we can rearrange for the for the put options value. Put option is equal to the negative S0 plus C, the call options value, and plus the present value of the excess price. And this is the put call parity. And we also need to know a little bit about the limitation of the put call parity. Just like the Black Shoes option pricing model, the put call parity can only be used on European put options or European call options. And the put call parity also does not hold for stocks that pay dividends. But for the Black Shoes model, and we did something to to put the dividends. If you look at those variables, actually there is a annual dividend yield, annual dividend yield of the underlying stock. But for put call parity, and uh, we did not assume any dividend paying activities for and uh, for the underlying stocks. So these are the two limitations of the put call parity, and this is also the end of our class. So if um, if you have time, please go to finish the extra credit, then you will get the one extra credit for this course. And I will see you next time.